Thanks, Cass. Good morning. Trust you're doing all right this morning. It's a bit cold for me, but um, you're probably loving the warm weather. Um, great to be with you this morning. And um, yeah, as I said in the early service, um, for Sondra and I, this feels like home. We know so many faces and being here and um, a lot of the faces are still the same, just a little bit more gray hair on top. Um, I can't say anything. I've got gray hair on the side as well. So, And um, sometimes I even need to use glasses to read. So anyway, things change. But, um, but it's good to see so many familiar faces and people that we've loved and been part of our lives from just uh, young people in this church and growing up here. So love being here, love being with you. And um, yeah, a big thank you to those who specifically you're um, financially contributing to the journey that Sandra and I have been on for 12 years. Um, can't believe that. When we left, our kids were like this. Um, James is coming down here ne next year, for those who don't know. So he'll be part of the church here next year. Um, so he's coming down to do his teaching degree at Tabor. Um, so tomorrow, Sandra's heading back to Cairns to be with him because he's in his drama production for tomorrow night and Tuesday night. And then he's got exams a week or so after that. So she's going back to be there. Otherwise, she'd stay for a bit longer. But um, So he's graduate doing his year 12. And then... Um, January, February, February, he'll be down here to be part of the church here and um, serve here and um, just, yeah, so we're excited about that. So he's coming back, mum and dad, he's going to live with mum and dad again, so I don't know if they, he lived with them for three years when he was from 12 to 15, um, now he's going, moving back in with them, so um, yeah, so we're excited for him, for his future, but also a little bit sad for ourselves, because um, we're going to miss him heaps, but, uh, but we're doing well as a family and um, yeah, things are Things are doing great. So big thank you for your support financially, but also your prayers and all your encouragement and um, all those sorts of things. So um, as Pastor Bill, we've got the supporters meters coming, um, coming up. But if you'd like to just receive a note every now and then that we send out for just so you know what we're doing. Not, if you can't commit financially, but you just love to know what we're doing and um, would love to pray, we would love to have you on the journey with us. And um, if you put your name down somewhere and let us know that you'd love to receive an email, Sandra will organize that and get you an email regularly about all the things that we're up to so that'd be good but we really do cherish your prayers as well um i'm going to talk this morning about people of influence and being a road builder but before i do that i just want to look at some photos i've got a, just a few photos to show you um just some of the things that i've been up to in the last little bit of time this photo was taken um in september this year um earlier in september i went to india it was my third trip for the year uh, Alyssa came with me on this trip, so it was absolutely fantastic to have uh, Alyssa with me, traveling around and seeing what we do. Um, she got to see another side of Pastor Barry that many people don't. She had breakfast and lunch and dinner with Pastor Barry for three weeks, so she got to see another side of Pastor Barry. Um, not back to that other photo, please. Not the, not the loving, exciting Pastor Barry, the grumpy, cranky Pastor Barry sometimes. <laughs> and um, none of you would believe that sometimes he's grumpy and cranky, but he is sometimes. Um, so anyway, this photo, these four guys in this photo, let me tell you their story. Um, I got to preach in this church, and this church is in Infal, which is right on the India-Myanmar border, about 70 kilometers from the border on the India side. These four uh, young men, or young guys, have, well, they're not actually that young, but they've been, come out of hospital, and they're in, in rehab. Um, and the guy who runs this church works in the hospital in the drug rehab and alcohol rehab center. So all of them have had long-term substance abuse. Um, and he's been part of their, their health and their cognitive therapy and their drugs and things of actually getting them off their, their addiction. But he's actually doing a, a, um, a, a PhD doc, uh, doc uh, research project on the impact of Christianity and the spirituality of how that influences their ability to stay off the drugs. Um, so these guys are part of his sample group. Um, but they're also coming to Christ and knowing Jesus and getting bap got baptized a couple of weeks ago. Um, one of them came down the front when I, after I'd shared and said, oh, can you pray for me? My body has got these, all these aches and pains because of the withdrawal that I'm going through. Um, so I prayed with him and then he went and sat down. And then this lady came forward with what I thought was her mother standing next to her. And she said, I want to give my life to Jesus. And she said, oh, the one that you just prayed for, that's my husband. And I said, mate, you've had... A tough life living with a guy who's been an alcoholic for over eight years and she said yeah it's been hard but she could see what Jesus Christ had done in his life in the last three to four months and said I, I need that so she was actually making a choice I'm going to leave my Hindu tradition and the impact of that on the rest of her family so I'm going to leave that and actually become 
a follower of Jesus Christ. And that morning she gave her life to Jesus. So it was an absolute privilege to be able to lead her to Christ and to, to pray with her and um, at that moment. And then, so I prayed with her and then I spoke to this lady next to her, which I thought was her mother, but it was actually her mother-in-law. Um, and, but she didn't want to become a Christian. She's not a Christian yet, but she said, can you pray for me? Um, she said, I have HIV AIDS. And she'd contracted AIDS because of the unfaithfulness and the drug use of her husband and his um, sexual uh, unfaithfulness. Um, but she's going through a whole heap of issues with that and um, struggling to get access to medication and different things. But I was able to pray with her. But she's coming to the church. And I believe that in weeks and months to come, as she goes through the journey, she will come to Christ. Um, but this, the guy who runs this church... He's come out of a Hindu background. He has a temple on top of his house that his father built when his father built the house that they no longer use um, and has faced a lot of persecution, a lot of criticism from the community that he lives in. He says, I am going to reach Hindus for Jesus Christ and he's doing a great job um, but facing a lot of challenges as well. The next photo. This photo, in, in June this year, we started a, um, a, an evangelism school um, in India uh, we have another World Missions Faith Training School in Siliguri. Um, this place is close to the India border in a place called Infal, which is, for those who know their war history, the Japanese and the British and the Indians had a fight for Infal. It was a very um, famous uh, fight there. Um, so you go to the war memorials and there's just hundreds of young men, um, British men and Indian soldiers that were killed uh, in Infal for the fight for Infal. But we're, um, we've started this evangelism school there. So all the ones at the back, the front row are our staff, the ones at the back are our, our students, and they're all 17, 18, 19 year olds, the old ones I think is 21, um, and they're just saying, we want to be trained in evangelism, we want to preach the gospel. And unfortunately for them, from the, the churches that they come from, they say to us, look, they, they're not going to create opportunity for us, you have to have a master's in theology before you can preach the gospel, or minister, or do anything. And we're saying, we'll, cut, we'll train you. And they're saying, we want to work with you. We want to work with you guys and plant churches and preach the gospel. And two of them, um, hopefully next year or the year after, will end up in Myanmar for a couple of months doing some evangelism, working through there. And we're going to start a church next year right on the border so that these students can go and plant that church. Uh, so that's exciting for us. Let's just rent a house and send these ones and hopefully something will come up. Um, the, te the team at the front, they're all young. Um, some of them, Hannah, who's right on the, the far left, is, um, she's 19, and she's one of our staff discipling all these others. Um, but she just feels the call of God, so we say, okay, we'll create a way for you, create opportunity for you. So uh, she's there training, part of the team. Uh, Purnima, who's in the middle, she was trained in Papua New Guinea. She's an Indian, but trained in Papua New Guinea as well, and now she runs the, runs the school there. The lady in, um, the more senior lady, or I don't know what's the right politically correct word, um, She's our chaperone, um, and I interviewed her to, for, the, for the job of being our chaperone, and she um, said, look, I'm, you know, I'm 70, and, um, and, but I want to do something for Jesus. So she's there with all these young people. She chaperones them and makes sure there's no funny business and boy-girl relationships and all those sorts of things. But for her, she says, I wish I was 20 again. I missed out on serving Jesus with my life. So here, you're 70, you can still have an impact, you can still have an influence. So age is no, does not determine your influence. Um, so she's still at that age, she's so excited there. She has a home and family that live in the town, and we said, oh, you can come during the week and go home on the weekend. She said, no, I'm here full time. So she goes home every now and then to be with her grandkids and family, but um, she's just absolutely loving serving the Lord. Uh, let's flip to the next photo. That's jumping from India, to, that's in Ghana. A um, couple of weeks ago, Pastor John Botan, he's the white teeth. I don't think you can see his face, uh, but you can see his white teeth. That's Pastor John. Um, Pastor Barry, myself, and Malcolm Taylor, we went to, to Ghana um, and had a wonderful time there with John. He's a fantastic man. I know he preached here a couple of weeks ago on the Sunday night and did an awesome sermon. Um, but part of my travel this year has got me to Ghana. Um, and we're looking at getting some Papua New Guinea missionaries to Ghana and some uh, people from Ghana to PNG to be trained in our preschool teacher training uh, course that we're starting up there next year. So, yeah, and there's Pastor Barry at 80 years of age, traveling to Africa. Uh, so any of you that give me the excuse, I'm old, I'll just point you to Pastor Barry. He's still influencing people all around the world. Um, if it's, and also through his emails and writings and everything else, but he actually still goes and 
has a, it's having a huge impact on people's lives. So don't let age be a determining factor for you in your influence. Next. Oh, we've got these out of order. Anyway, that's, uh, that is my beautiful wife, Sandra. Uh, and in Infal, uh, the pastor we work there, he has a children's home. Uh, three of these, the girl and two of the boys are his own, but the others are from the tribal area. So he uh, provides education for them and schooling for them. So um, Sandra and I and others help um, provide for their, their school fee and their education and the food and different things. But he has them come into the house. They all live in one big room. Um, but yeah, there's a great work there. Alyssa got to run Sunday school for them when she was there. Next photo. That's Robinson. And I'll tell you his story a little bit later on as well. But he's a man I got to lead to Christ, a businessman, a Hindu man who uh, came to Christ uh, in Infal. And um, every time we come, he comes and visits us. So when we rock up, he brings, comes along. He says he's got his car and he's driving us around and doing this. I want to do something for Jesus. So um, his car is a bit nicer than the one we normally travel in. So that's nice for Pastor Barry to have air conditioning and a few other things. So um, it is a great man. And yeah, next photo. I think that might be it. Oh, we've jumped all over the place. Sorry about this. This one is in Myanmar. Uh, I get to Myanmar uh, once a year. Next year, I'll be there a couple of times a year. That is Pastor Andrew's church. Um, I don't know if you know the work there. We run evangelism schools and training there in the nation of Myanmar. But Pastor Andrew has a fantastic church there. And the CRC is linked in with Andrew. Um, I myself was there in August. And with Pastor Barry, I'll be back there in March, probably next year. And then again later in the year to run evangelism schools. But Andrew's a great man and uh, got a fantastic church. And a nation that... Um, has oppressed Christianity for so long, but he is a real positive influence into that nation. And we all know, if you've heard about what's happening with the Rohingya uh, in Myanmar, they need, that nation needs the gospel to bring some massive healing and forgiveness and uh, restoration to what's going on there. So pray for, pray for the nation of Myanmar. But there, I think that's all. I think that's enough anyway, even if there is more. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about being a person of influence being a road builder, and that's, I guess I show those photos and I feel like that's part of what I do. Um, but for each one of us, you are a person of influence, you are a road builder. And you may say, well, I don't have a position, I don't have a title, I don't have this, I don't have that, but I want to tell you, you are influencing somebody's life. Whether you like that or not, uh, some of you will go, yes, I love it, I want to be an influence. Others you'll go, I don't want to influence people, I just want to get on with living my my life. But you are an influence, and God calls each one of us to be an influence, to create roads and pathways for people to get to God, to draw closer to Him, but also to be people who create pathways for others to travel along behind us, uh, but also to be people who create pathways where then we get people to a certain point, and then we release them into what God is calling them to do. So for this church, I'm just so excited to hear all about what's happening down at, with Tim Lockins and the, the team down at South. Like that is creating a pathway, creating a way for more people to hear about Jesus, for more people to know Christ, um, and for them to touch that community. But it's also a way, creating a way for all that team that have gone who are now serving and creating opportunities for them to do ministry and to plant themselves into to serving the Lord. And also creates a whole heap of pathways here for a mass of other people who, those who have left, to actually step up into other things that God has for each one of you to do. Um, so it's very exciting. I'll just say these few things about influence before we jump on. Influence does not mean famous. Sometimes we think, oh, I want to be influential, it means fame. There's been some very influential people in my life, but they're not famous people. People that you wouldn't even know, but they've had an influence in my life. You may be one of those. Nobody else knows the influence you've had on somebody else's life, but that person does. So don't think it's about being famous. Influence is not determined by position or title. So you're going to have a title, you're going to have a position before I can influence. No, it's not determined by that. And people of true influence are people who have a heart for others. Love always builds roads. If we have a heart for others and we love others, we will be a person of influence. Isaiah 57 verse 14 says, build up, build up, prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. Another translation says, build up the road, build it up, make it ready. Remove anything that would keep my people from coming back 
anything that would keep my people from coming back. At this time in the nation of Israel, they were a people who were far from God. God's people were far from God. And the prophet is getting a word from God saying, build up, build up, make roadways for those people who are far from me to come back to me. That always is the heart of God. It is his heart. It was his heart back then and his heart today. That people would come back to him. They would come to him. That we would create roadways and pathways and opportunities for people to come close to God. But it says remove the obstacles. That word obstacles there in another translation says stumbling blocks. Um, If you look at the Hebrew, it can mean uh, the enticements, the things that entice people away. For the people of Israel at that time, these people were into prostitution, they were sacrificing babies, they were in sorcery, they were mocking God, they had false worship, they were self-sufficient. If you look at the passage before, all these things are there about how they, all these things were stumbling blocks and enticements that had drawn them away from God. And if I was God, I would say, leave them there and let's go somewhere else. Leave them in their trouble. They've rejected me or they've moved away from me. But God's heart is and always is that people would come back to Him, that there would be pathways and roadways for people to come to Christ. And in this passage, I think He's putting the responsibility on us to actually be the people who remove the obstacles. Remove the obstacles in people's lives or the obstacles in the way that we do church or the way that we speak or the things that we say that actually stop people from getting to Christ. In our society, culture is changing so fast here in Australia. Sandra and I came back from Papua New Guinea and came back to um, far north Queensland and they have a different culture up in far north Queensland to um, other parts of Australia. Anyone who's been to far north Queensland will understand um, but we have a different culture up there um, to the rest of Australia. But even coming, down, coming back to Australia, we had to go through a sense of, man, culture has changed. In nine years of us being away, people speak differently. They think differently. When you're in it, you may not necessarily pick it all up. But for you and I, if we're going to minister to people here in Australia, we need to know our culture. We need to know the things that motivate, the way that they speak, the way that they talk, and how some of the things we do um, may actually be a blockage to them coming. That we can get rid of those things that are a blockage from them getting to the gate. Jesus Christ is the gate. I'm not the gate. You're not the gate. Jesus is the gate. But we are to make pathways to Christ the gate so that they can get to Him. Whether Wherever that is for you, whether that's in your your school, I was talking to someone after the, the morning service, and they're both teachers. And I said, you guys are influential. you got 13 kids for a year that you have influence into their life. And they said, as we were talking, they said, well, it used to be normal that most kids would come from a mum and dad home, where the mum and dad actually lived together. He said, they're actually saying in their class, that's the minority. Um, I said, man, what an influence you guys can be over those kids' lives. If you can remove obstacles and remove things, but speak that into their lives. How awesome is that? So any of you are school teachers, man, you're doing a great job. Be an influence over those kids' lives. But wherever you are, wherever God has placed you, whether it's being a mom or a dad or a husband or a grandmother or a grandfather, you have influence. We used to run a program out here called Club Barnabas. Some of you may remember that. Daggy, old name. I don't even know why we called it that. It was Daggy back then. It still is Daggy. Um, But... We called it that, but we'd have kids coming along, but most of the kids that came and stuck would say they remembered a grandmother or a grandfather that gave them a Bible or prayed for them or took them to Sunday school one day. So if you're a grandmother or a grandfather, have influence on your grandkids. Impart into their lives, speak into their lives, because you can be such a significant influence upon them. And if you're a parent and you think, man, I missed it with my kids, but man, make it right with your grandkids. How awesome would that be? So be a people, let's be people of influence. God has placed us in this, on this planet to be influencers, to be pioneers, to be road builders. A number of years ago, I was with Dad and we were driving from Ernabella across to, to Warburton. That's a long, dusty old road. Um, but as we were driving along, Dad says, I remember when they made this road. I met the guy who built this road. Um, and... And he just talked about that. And as I was thinking, man, this is a dirty, dusty old road. 
and you can go, you can drive for hours and hours. Alyssa, you would know. Um, you can drive for hours and hours along. Or Sandra, you'd even know even more. You've probably travelled it many times. But somebody went before to drive, make that road so that we could drive on the corrugations. Um, but, <laughs> but someone went before. They pioneered. They went out there and made a pathway so that others could follow behind. They created that road so that others could go. So as they're out there, they would have been moving logs, cutting down trees, moving rocks out of the way, preparing this road for others who are coming behind. You and I, we have that responsibility. You and I, we have that job to create roads for others who are following behind us. So let's not forget those that are coming behind. In um, Hebrews 12 verse 13, there's a passage there that really um, the writer of Hebrews is saying, well, yep, get your path straight, out, straight, get your path going straight, but not for, just for yourself, but for those who are coming behind. Think about those who are coming behind. So Hebrews 12 verse 13 says, mark out a straight path for your feet. Then those who follow you, though they are weak and lame, will not stumble and fall, but will become strong. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those coming behind, they don't stumble, they don't fall, they're not weak. That's actually a reference from Proverbs uh, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, which says, mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the straight path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from, from following evil. But he's talking about keep on that straight path Walk that straight path for yourself. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get caught up in evil. Don't get caught up in other things. Why? Because there's somebody following behind you. You may not feel like it, but there's somebody following you. You're influencing somebody. When we lived at Semaphore Park, before we went to Papua New Guinea, um, I had the job of looking after our children one day. And when I got to look after the kids, it was always chaos and there was always trouble. Um, when it was, Sandra was there, it was just smooth and beautiful and wonderful. But... Um, this particular time, I won't tell you all the stories, but this particular time, um, James walked into the lounge room and he had all this blood around his face. And I'm thinking, he's fallen over and knocked out a tooth and there's blood everywhere and I'm thinking, what's going on? So I get a cloth and I wipe everything off and we get it clear and there's just a few little scratches on his face. There was just more blood than there, there was cuts or anything like that. And I tried to, trying to communicate with him and said, what happened? So he took me into the bathroom. By the hand, took me into the bathroom and he grabbed my shaver. And he just decided to shave. I didn't tell him he needed to shave at, what, three years of age? Um, I hadn't given him lessons on shaving. I wasn't preparing him for shaving. But because he had seen me doing it, he was following my example. Now at 17, I have to keep reminding him to shave. It's too much. Get shaved before you go to school, boy. Um, but he was following my example. He was watching me. There's somebody watching you. You might think, oh, I just sit at the back. I'm not this, I'm not that. Somebody's watching. You are creating roads. You're creating pathways for others. That passage in Hebrews 14 through to 16 goes on and it talks about, gives us six things that actually can be stumbling blocks that make our road that we make bumpy for those traveling behind us. And as a community, as a church, as, a, as an individual, they're worth just having a quick look at and doing a little bit of assessment, saying, how am I doing in this area so that I can be an influence, that I don't be a stumbling block for, for those coming behind or um, cause people to trip, particularly those who are weak or lame or younger than us coming behind us. Let's have a look at that. I think they'll stick it up there for you. It's in the, I'm using the New Living Translation. Um, I'll read it to you, then we'll, we'll jump through it. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you falls and to, fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out for the, that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up, grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. So there's six things I quickly see there. We'll have a look at them. First one is Work out at living at peace with everyone. We need to be. If we're going to be a people of influence and not have stumbling blocks in our life for those traveling behind us, the same for us as a community, we need to be a community of peace. 
We need to have unity amongst us. Not a community where there's arguing and criticizing and complaining, but a community where we are united, where we have one heart moving together, where we're peace-loving people, where we do everything we can, everything possible to ensure that we live at peace with each other and one another. Because it is a stumbling block. For those that are coming in, and maybe even for those coming behind, that if they come into a place where it's critical and negative or all sorts of things. So let's be peace lovers. Next one is working, work at living a holy life. Another translation says, seek to live a clean and holy life. Living a holy life. The standard you set, the way you live your life, living according to a biblical standard, you are setting a standard for those coming behind you. I'm so conscious of that as a dad to my kids, that the standard I set is what they will, will copy. Also for us, that there's people in our church, there's people around us that see our standard, the way we live, and think, oh, that's the standard we live up to. And if we're living below God's standards for us, it's very easy for that to be a stumbling block or excuse for somebody else not to continue on in their journey of following Christ. Look after each other. Compassion and care. We need to be a people of compassion and care. And when I look at this, we... Many of you may see Pastor Barry as this apostolic, pioneer, rough, bulldozer type of person. But I also have seen so many times his care for people. The amount he writes to people across the world. When he hears something's going on, he'll send them an email, send them a text, gets on the phone to them. Man, he cares for them. But you know, our care for one another speaks volumes to the people. The care for the people following behind us speaks volumes to them. So let's be people who care for one another. The bitter root of, oh, the, the root of bitterness, let's not have the root of bitterness. Oh, criticism destroys. Ever tried to follow somebody who's critical and complaining? Man, it is a stumbling block. Let's not be critical people because it puts a block in the way of others. It causes trouble. It never wins. If you're critical, it will never win for you. It'll be hard for your family, hard for your kids, hard for those that are following, hard for your work. It'll be hard everywhere. Being bitter and critical never wins. Just cause problems for yourself and for those traveling behind. Being sexually immoral is another one. Make sure no one is sexually immoral. Sexual immorality always causes problems. We're living in a world where, in the West in particular, where the bi biblical standard of, um, of sexuality and what, what our marriage is is under attack. Um, but we have the responsibility to set a standard in this area, to be an example in this to others, but also to be an influence. To all the youth leaders here, I want to challenge you, if you're a youth leader or a young, young leader leading young people, setting a standard for those following behind you, for those in your late teens, early 20s who are leading those in their junior age group, setting a standard for them of, of sexuality and what it is to be faithful until marriage because it could be a roadblock for those following behind if you don't get it right. Then the sixth one is, make sure no one is godless like Esau, who sold his inheritance for a single meal. He gave up his inheritance for a meal. He gave, got rid of his birthright for a, a moment's pleasure, a meal that just to satisfy him in that moment. What a terrible story. Man, God, I don't want to be like that. I have a birthright. I am a child of God. I belong to Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for me. That gives me an inheritance. It gives you an inheritance. It gives you authority. It gives you victory. It gives you peace with God. I have the word of God that says, this is my inheritance and I'm going to stand according to that. No matter what people say about the word of God and they criticize it, it says it has no authority or no right to speak anymore. For my life, it is my inheritance and it speaks to me and it sets the standard for my life. I'm not going to give up on my inheritance. I'm not going to move the boundary stones. Too many people are moving the boundaries. God has said this for them or they've been planted in this place, but they, they're moving those things. God's planted me. He's given me an inheritance. I'm going to grow in that. I'm going to stay in that. They are my birthright and I'm not letting them go. I'm holding on to them. So for each one of us to hold on to our inheritance, to hold on to our heritage, to hold on to where God has planted us, I'm not a pot plant Christian. Some people are pot plant Christians. When you put a, pot, a plant in a pot, you plan to move it. 
Well, they just, okay, when it's time, they'll just move it somewhere else, move here, move there, move where they think it's more sunny or shiny. God's planted me. I've got my roots down. So we put our inheritance down where God has placed us and we stay true to our heritage and our inheritance. And for me, that's CRC, that's Christian Family Center. And then beyond that, it's Jesus Christ and what His Word says to me. Hallelujah. So let's create pathways for those coming behind for us. And there are some things that can be stumbling blocks for those traveling behind us. Let's have a look at one last scripture, maybe two. Isaiah 62, verse 10. It says, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise the banner for the nations. Removing the, the stones that are obstacles. God, I want to be a, a road or create roads that are smooth for people to come in. I don't want to be putting stones or stumbling blocks in people's way to stop them from getting to you or what God has for them. So let's remove those stones and allow God to do that. But in Peter, it says these words. It won't be on the screen, this one. Um, in 1 Peter 2, verse 7 and 8, it says, Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. That stone is Jesus Christ. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builder rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. I'll get people to Jesus. If they stumble over him and his message, that's between them and God. I can't do anything about that. But I don't want to be the stumbling stone. I want them to get to the message of Jesus Christ, to hear Jesus Christ, to hear his word, and then it's in their hands, their choice. So let's not allow ourselves to be that stumbling stone, that roadblock. But also as people of influence, let's be people who are not just creating roads to people to come to God, but also creating roads for people to launch them into what God has for them. Mum and dad have a house, or live at Hendon, and we, I don't know when this was, this was many years ago, we were there, and at the front there's all these tiles, and it's like a little veranda, and it's just then a step down to the concrete pathway, and when that got a little bit of dust on it, and with a little bit of water, it was super slippery. So I was there one day with Benjamin, I said, Benjamin, come here. So I grabbed him by the scruff of his shirt. and the Benjamin like that. Benjamin's like this now, but he was like that then. Um, so I grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and by his pants and said, okay, try this, mate. I threw him down the thing. And he slid down the thing. I said, oh, this is fantastic. So he jumped up and got him about halfway, jumped up and came back and said, I'll do it again. So this time, even a bit harder, threw him down. I think it was the third time, maybe the fourth time of doing this. I thought, this one, I'll give him, it'll get him right to the end. So I launched him into his destiny, into his future, into what God's plan and purpose for him. So I launched him and off he went. Um, but he had no way to stop at the other end. So he face planted into the concrete, off the edge and bang, face planted into the concrete. So I got him back. Come on, Bench, let's go another time. I'm not so hard this time. Set him down again. Um, but you know, you and I, we're creating pathways and roads for people following behind us, but we're also meant to be people that launch people into what God has for them. As a church, starting, um, I was going to say Cairns South, but it's not Cairns South, it's actually CFC South, sorry. Um, but CFC South, you're launching people into the future. There's more of those to be started. There's Sunday school programs to be run. Kids Church, you're launching people into their destiny. Youth programs that are grabbing hold of people and launching them into their destiny. You are a road builder. Doesn't mean you're going to be famous. Doesn't mean anyone's even going to notice. But there's people around waiting for your word, you to speak, you to believe in them, you to do something that launches them into what God has for them and their future. And yet, like Benjamin, you might have some epic fails at the end or go out in style, but just get back up and try again. Just keep doing it. Keep launching people into all that God has for them. Okay. To finish off, I talked about having a straight path and maybe you don't feel like your path is straight. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the master road builder and he has made my path straight. The apostle Paul was a crooked man before he came to Christ. His path was not straight, but he met Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ came to him 
and straightened him out, put him on the straight path and launched him into his destiny. So maybe today, as I've shared, you feel like, man, there's some, there's some little bumps. They may not even be massive bumps, but you know there's some bumps in your road and you think, man, yeah, there's some things I need to get sorted out for those, just for yourself, but also for those following behind you. you think, no, that actually is a discouragement. That's something for those following behind. Man, let Jesus Christ be the one who is the road, master road builder that brings, makes a nice smooth road for you to travel. But also, let's choose to be people of influence that say, yeah, I want to influence others. I want to launch people in to what Christ has for them. This is not to do with age. You might feel like, oh, I'm, a, I'm old and pastor. Well, Pastor Barry's 80, so you've got no excuse. But he's still speaking words. And Sandra and I come here, and we still have lovely people in this church that are well on in age that come and just speak a positive word to us. And it's them still encouraging us, launching us into what we're doing. Um, so God hasn't finished with you. He has more for you to do. Whether you've got a title or a position or a name or whatever, or you've made some hiccups before, He's the master road builder. He'll straighten your path. Let him do it. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the musicians to come and we'll pray and we'll stand together in a minute. And Father, I just pray for you and thank you for that you have mandated for each one of us to be an influence, that you have not placed us where we are by accident, that you've placed us on this planet in this city, in this church, in our community, in our workplace, in our family, so that we can be an influence for you, that we can draw people closer to you, that we can bring people closer to you, and that we can launch people into their destinies. Father, I pray that each one of us would take that seriously and be ready to engage, ready to take hold of all that you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Musicians are going to lead us in a song. Um, so let's sing this together, prayerfully reflect, allow Jesus to speak to you as we, um, as we sing this song together. Let's sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning. Let's sing that again. We're going to follow him. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided. We're going to continue to sing that in a, in a minute, but uh, we just want to open up the front for prayer. We believe that God is here and He ministers to people through the laying on of hands and, um, and through prayer, faithful prayer. Our prayer team is ready, full of faith to believe and stand with you. But if you'd like to come, say, look, I want to be a person of influence. I want to make a conscious choice by faith to say, yep, God, I want to influence my family. I want to influence those people around me. I want to if you want to do that and you want to just come and say, God, use me, expand me, create opportunities in me, and you're making that choice. And you just want to come and stand out here and have someone pray with you, that would be awesome and love to have our team pray with you. Or maybe you're looking at your life and think, oh, there's been some hiccups along the way. I'm not talking about big mountains or big stones, but just little things along the way or some things at the moment you think, man, I need to be straightened out. I need Jesus just to help me in this area. Got some troubles going on, got some difficulties going on at the moment. You don't have to share that with the person who's praying with you. Just come and just ask them to pray with you. They'd love to pray with you. But just you standing here saying, Lord, I, want you to, I, want, I need your help today. I need a bit of that grace. I don't want to miss out on the grace. And we have a team here that would love to care for you and pray for you. We also, 
our heritage, our birthright, is that we believe in healing, that Jesus heals. And if you're sick, I'd love you to come and we will lay hands and believe that Jesus Christ will heal you because we have a God who heals. And it's our inheritance, our right to come before Him and say, God, heal me, I'm sick. And if that is you, you come as well. And we'd love to, love to pray with you. I'd love to pray with you. And just believe for that sickness to move and to lift in the name of Jesus Christ.